A man is set to be executed. By what method? Nitrogen, an untested method it is. Alabama, Kenneth Eugene Smith is set to become the first person in the United States to be executed by nitrogen gas. As he spends his final days on death row, he says he is haunted by thoughts of the untested procedure. Not a lawyer, but right there, isn't that cruel and unusual? I don't know what's gonna happen. They say it's gonna kill me. I don't know if it's gonna be fast. Don't know if it's gonna be painful. Smith was one of two men convicted in 1989 of murdering a preacher's wife. Smith's jury overwhelmingly rejected the death penalty in his case. Deciding by an 11 to 1 vote that he should be sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. But the trial court overruled the jury and sentenced Mr. Smith to death under a judicial override law that was abolished in 2017. Why bother having a jury? Why bother having your so called peers, other members of the community sit in judgment? There's problems with that already. But why bother to have them sit in judgment? When they render a decision, if you're just going to say, no, nope, we like to kill. So he killed, we're going to kill. And that's just what it's going to be. And then it's abolished in 2017. That to me would be enough right there. Again, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer here. I'm not a judge. But if it's abolished in 2017, don't you think that we should kind of, the humanitarian thing to do would just be say, all right, we're going to, we're going to reverse the, the death on this one too, that decision. Hmm. November 2022. First time Kenneth Eugene Smith was about to die. Again, cool and unusual. Alabama's executioners had several hours to kill him. They bound the condemned man to a gurney in the so-called death chamber of Holman Correctional Facility and tried to inject him with a lethal blend of chemicals. Didn't work, they failed, unable to raise a vein. Which Smith's lawyer said left him with numerous incisions. They abandoned the attempt as the clock hit midnight and the state's death warrant expired. BBC News with those horrific details. I guess if the death warrant hadn't expired, they would have just keep keep trying, huh? Now, Alabama will try to kill him again. Mm. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. This time the US state is authorized the plan to suffocate Smith by strapping an airtight mask over his face and forcing him to inhale pure nitrogen and inert gas that would starve his body of oxygen. The UN's High Commissioner for Human Rights last week said the never before used method could amount to torture or other cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment and called for a halt. It's sad that the UN Commissioner has to tell you that. It's it's very sad. Final appeal ruling is still outstanding after a federal court rejected his lawyer's request for an injunction. Smith is due to be executed on Thursday. Here's what Smith told the BBC. I'm nauseous all the time, panic attacks hit regularly. This is just a small part of what I've been dealing with daily, torture basically. He wrote, he called for Alabama to stop the execution before it's too late. Alabama has one of the highest per capita execution rates in the US, has 165 people currently on death row. Since 2018, the state has been responsible for three botched attempts at lethal injection in which the condemned inmates survived. The failures led to an internal review, which largely placed blame on the prisoners themselves. That sounds like Alabama. Medical experts and campaigners have warned about the risk of catastrophic mishaps, ranging from violent convulsions to survival in a vegetative state. And even the possibility of gas leaking from the mask and killing others in the room, including Mr. Smith's religious advocate. Well, that's generous. They're going to let his religious advocate spend the final moments with him. Smith's spiritual advisor, Reverend Dr. Jeff Hood, told the BBC, I'm certain that Kenny's not afraid to die. He's made that very clear. I think he's afraid that he will be 
even further tortured in the process, he says. He has signed a legal waiver from the state spelling out the dangers of a nitrogen leak. I'll be a number of feet from him. And I have been warned repeatedly by various medical experts that I'm risking my life to do this. If there's any sort of leak in the hose, if there's any sort of leak from the mask, from the seal around his face, it could certainly lead to nitrogen leaking into the room. Dr. Joel Zivit, associate professor in anesthesiology at Emory University School of Medicine said that nitrogen makes up 78% of the air we breathe, passing in and out of the body harmlessly with every breath, but breathing pure nitrogen. Well, that deprives the body cells and organs of oxygen, causing them to break down and eventual, well, eventually leading to death. He warns of unintended risks for the presence of pure nitrogen, changing the oxygen to nitrogen ratio in the execution chamber, especially a smith could hold his breath or move his head against the mask or the equipment. I, I can assure you they're working on a plan to secure that mask right now, right? The equipment could leak. Some of it will be exhaled by Smith along with the carbon dioxide and some of it may leak out of the mask. I think that presents a real and material danger to this execution, Dr. Zivat said, he's a doctor. Response from the Alabama Department of Corrections. The Alabama Department of Corrections appears to have attempted to address this concern. Appears to have, did I read that right? Appears to have attempted to address this concern. In the waiver form, it's sent to Dr. Hood. It says there are wall mounted oxygen sensors in the execution chamber. Also warns the spiritual advisor of the generic risk posed when nitrogen rapidly displaces oxygen, causing loss of consciousness without warning. It urges him to stay at least three feet away from Smith at all times, warning of a small area risk of nitrogen outflow. Well, that ought to make him feel better, right? Mr. Hood, these are the same people that botched a previous execution attempt, but I'm sure they've got it this time. Dr. Joseph, Antognini testified on behalf of the state in December in a hearing regarding Alabama's planned experimentation with the untried execution method. You gonna experiment on a human being. Death penalty action launched a campaign earlier this week urging the California Medical Board to investigate the activities of Dr. Antognini for violating the Hippocratic Oath by supporting the untested execution method. I don't know what he got for this, if anything, but I'd like to know if someone was paid here. I don't want any doctor who was paid to support this when other doctors who doesn't seem like they were paid are saying, you, you might want to hold up on this. Don't do this. Meanwhile, Dr. Zavat believes the risk assessment amounts to a form of pseudoscience since execution by nitrogen has never been attempted. And it's not clear how long it will take Smith to die. There is no science. This is just really pulling anecdotes and imagining and trying to think of what may occur based upon, again, other pieces of information that are really not at all a scientific inquiry. Mm. It amounts to an intolerable level of danger, says one expert who co authored an investigation sent to the UN. Dr. Zivit also accused the Alabama authorities of a terrible track record of cruel execution. I guess I have to conclude that Kenneth Smith must be the worst man in America because Alabama is so hell bent on killing him, they're willing to kill other people to kill him. That's not too far, folks. Dr. Zivit told the BBC, imagine the firing squad where all the witnesses are lined up next to the person you're about to execute and you get them all to sign waivers because it turns out but the guys you've got are not very good shots, and so it's possible that they might shoot you too. So these are some of the things I can imagine that could happen with nitrogen gas, he said. What we do know about nitrogen gas is that in an early study with healthy volunteers, almost all of them, about 15 into 20 seconds of breathing, had a generalized seizure, he said. 
such a scenario, Smith could lose consciousness or suffer a series of violent spasms. A little bit more for you. Mass incarceration activist Jeanette Jones warned during her statement, one should have this information because it's imperative the public hear these facts about board certified doctors and pharmaceutical companies and their stance of wanting nothing to do with the taking of a life. So those who carry out the executions are correctional officers, no medical background, and are only required to have a high school diploma to be hired. Hmm. Every person in that room, imminent danger of stroking out, dying if any gas seeps out. And I wonder to myself, what is it going to take for them to stop? The AD OC does not even care about the health and safety of their own staff. Mass incarceration must end in with the reporting there. It's a true statement. If any, any of these facts are true, it's a true statement. A petition has been started asking Governor Ivey to stop this execution. There you see it there, deathpenaltyaction.org. There's the link to that petition. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey, who has the power to hope judicial killings, declined to comment on the expert warnings and the allegations against the state. The Attorney General's office called the UN's concerns as unfounded as Smith's. What on earth are you doing in the governor's mansion, even in Alabama, if you quote, decline to comment? On the warnings, the concerns. My gosh, Governor Ivy, go vacate the premises. And that dippy statement by the state attorney general saying the UN's concerns, it's not just the UN, by the way, unfounded. This is sick. I don't believe we should sit at the table, Mayor, the UN or anywhere else, policing the world and talking about human rights. When we are carrying Alabama's nasty disgustingness on our backs, is that too much? Not at all. I mean, listen, the state has a horrible record, not just with this inmate of not killing him while they're trying to kill him. But in general, I mean, Alabama has already botched three in the last in the last two decades, three executions. And, and I think that number is way too high. This country is responsible for killing more people than any other country, and we need to stop. I mean, judicial killing does not deter crime. We've seen the death penalty not lower or stop murders from happening. So why are we doing it unless it's just cruel and intentional? And now we're adding an aspect of we're testing out new ways to kill people in 2024 with gas, with gas. How can any of this be real? Like, who wrote this script? What movie? Which studio is producing this movie? Because this cannot be reality, but for the United States of America. We sit and talk from our high, high horse about democracy and the right to life and how humanity should be golden. And we don't live out those principles. I mean, there was an elected official in that state talking about his, his governor, Ivy, is a Christian. So he knows she's thinking about this, but it's the law. It is, it is also the law that she can stop it. The, the jury of his peers did not give him the death penalty, right? It was the judge that overturned what the jury said and said, no, they gave him life in prison. The judge said, no, we're going to give you the death penalty. So that was one person decided to add this. We've already seen for me, for me, it's enough. Life in prison is enough for someone. And we need to stop acting like life in prison isn't a death sentence itself. You don't get out, you die in there. That is a death sentence. So this idea that we need to test new ways to kill this man is unremarkable in a traditional American way. In a state that can't even feed their residents, but they're spending money on new ways to kill people. Mm -hmm. huh. And uh, do you know what would happen, Mayor, if it was announced that someone was going to experiment this way on a hamster. There will be people who would say, no, you're not. And they would chain themselves places and they would interfere and they would hand. And there are people who are willing to do that in, in this case with this human being. I am disgusted. 
you're right, the people never said for you to do this. They said the opposite. Again, I asked, why did you bother to seat this jury? If what they say doesn't matter, then you're gonna abolish the law, but you won't overturn this. I see three or four ways for Governor Ivey to duck this and escape clean, pretty much clean. And not even the courage to do it. I don't want to hear about who's a Christian and who's thinking about this and what's way. She declined to comment. So I don't know if any of that's the case. Mm. So nobody needs to speak for her to me. I don't want, don't tell me nothing about uh, nothing if this is allowed to continue. Don't you say anything to me about this. I'll give you the last word. Yeah, you know what? That's that's a great point. I don't want to hear any about that. Also, I don't want to hear anything about Christians, especially not white Christians from Alabama. We know the history of white Christians in Alabama. They hung a lot of black people from trees and then went to church, right? We watched Bull Connor, who was the sheriff in Alabama, put dogs on kids. Bull Connor, right? Who was a Christian. So this idea that these Christianity absorbs you from taking responsibility of horrible behavior is ridiculous to me. I'll say amen to that, that I can say amen to, Mayor. We're gonna keep following it again. The deadline for the execution is Thursday. What will you do, Governor Ivey? And who is that judge anyway, who decided to override the jury?